Well, we're back at the Nevada Northern. Oh man, look at the storm. Isn't it beautiful out it here? It is. God's country, uh, sands trees. Yes. Anyway, uh, we wanted to do something more of a public service announcement today. Oh, I, yes. <laughs> you see, the thing is, we used to shoot with professional video cameras. Right. But the new iPhones are just so much better, we just shoot everything now with our iPhones. Well, plus with the high cost of gasoline, we have to take smaller cars and we can't afford to pack all that stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, fit an entire uh, <laughs> trunk worth of equipment in right. a pocket. So anyway, we're shooting. And we're noticing that everybody else is shooting with it's, their phone. Yeah, it does a really good job. But it's they're, handy. They're great cameras, but uh, people don't necessarily shoot great video. No, no, unfortunately. So we want to help people to avoid shooting, let's just call it bad video. <laughs> yes, I mean, there's so many times that I get a video from somebody and it's like that and mm -hmm. I can't even watch it. It's, it's, uh, yeah, you want to throw up rather than sit and watch it. It's just kind of, well, let's just say unwatchable. Right. So some general rules. Right. First rule is designed mostly to keep people alive. Exactly. And that stay at least 30 feet back from the track. Um, sometimes things will fall off of train. Sometimes things are flailing around off of the train. But there's a pragmatic reason here, too. And that's that uh, unless you want to get a picture of lug nuts as the train comes by. Right, the rod, there it goes. There it is, <laughs> yeah, uh, flanges on rails. If you actually want to see the train, you need to be back because these things are big. Right. Now, we just passed our Book of Rules class so we can run on the Nevada Northern. <laughs> that's right. And this is actually a rule on just about every railroad there is. Right. That's a general rule of railroads. Expect a movement on any track in any direction at any time. You know, that could actually apply even to a car show or something. Just be aware of your surroundings. And how. Uh, but it's so easy to, well, almost everybody that we know of that's been killed, and it's a few, uh, quite often taking pictures or taking video is because they were standing on an active track. Right, just they think it's really cool to take a picture of themselves on a railroad track. Or, or they're facing left when the train is coming from the right. Expect a movement on any track in any direction at any time. Right. That would even apply shopping at Walmart. You know, watch the carts. <laughs> Expect a cart in any aisle from any direction at any time. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so here's a case in point. This is one of my shots. I'm actually standing between the two tracks here, but I'm very, very close to the one shop track. I'm actually right in the doorway of the locomotive shop, and suddenly I can see that that train is lined onto the track that I am on. And so without stopping, I'm just getting well out of its way. Not back the requisite 30 feet, but just getting out of its way because good grief. And now I'm standing on another uh, track, which is potentially an active track. And so I really need to be aware that there could be a movement on that track from behind while I'm filming the train in front of me. Exactly. So always, always, always be aware of your surroundings. And then here's what happens if you're closer than 30 feet. Oh, there it is. There it is. I've got a great shot of the number on the side of the train. It's mm -hmm. kind of a neat shot, but if I really want to see the entire locomotive, just about now it's 30 feet away from me, and now I can see the entire train. Right. The whole locomotive is in frame, not just the wheels. And if I were going to take a still, this is the picture that I would want to take. So there's a pragmatic reason for staying back. You're going to get a better shot. Right. Boy, and you're going to have to be really careful because there is an open inspection pit right behind you. Yes. Be aware of your surroundings at all times. Uh, don't just look at the camera, look at the world around you. Right, look around first. Okay, now just like shooting stills, you want to pick your shot. Sort of like picking your nose when you find that spot, stick to it. <laughs> yeah. So you can pick your shot, you can also pick your friend's, I suppose you can pick your nose. Yes. But don't pick your friend's nose. No. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Anyway, 
Think of it just like shooting a still photograph. What's the subject of your picture? And then line up on that. Right. Here's number 81. It's a still of number 81. It's properly composed, I think, so that it shows the entire locomotive and everything that I wanted to show. I was careful to say the sun is at a certain position that I'd like to be over here. It's an overcast day, so that gives me really good light. But I've really thought this through and said, this is the subject. Here's where I want to be in order to take a picture of the subject. That's how you compose a still. You figure out your subject and then you find the good spot to shoot it. Same is true on video. Exactly. Uh, for some reason, we, we tend to think, oh, well, that, that's, I'm rolling, so I need to move because everything's moving. Oh, here's somebody walking, and no, I'll, I'll follow that. No, okay, back to my locomotive. No, you want to stay with the subject even if the subject is moving. Right. So in this case, the, the shot is evolving. Everything is uh, re-juxtapositioning. Everything is evolving in the shot, but the, the subject isn't. Right, so just move the camera slowly. Try to keep a focus point on the locomotive and follow it. We call this tracking, and in this case, there's a pun. Exactly, it's really <laughs> tracking. But we're tracking with the subject. We're following the subject. Now, this is sort of more of a suggestion than a rule. Right. Don't walk with the camera, but sometimes you just you just need to. Right. And, and sometimes your best footage is going to be if you just walk along while getting the video. Well, it's a talent that I've tried to develop, mostly from tiptoeing around toddlers when I had young kids when they were sleeping, but I more or less line up my shot in the cell phone and then walk carefully, not even looking in the cell phone. Right, and it's, it's walking like a Tai Chi master. Exactly, or a tightrope walker. <laughs> but you still have to be aware of your surroundings because you can do a face plant really easy. Yeah, tripping over the rail isn't the kind of train trip we want to take. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> now, I know it seems redundant and it also seems obvious, but stay as steady and smooth as humanly possible. Right. Pretend your camera is on a tripod, even though it isn't. Right. Just keep it smooth. Or fake a tripod. Now, I used to use a tripod with my professional camera, but with cell phones, I have found that just faking that. In this case, I'm setting my camera on a post. Right. But you can also lean up against a post. Right. Or any number. Sit on a bench. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things you can do to help stabilize the camera and create kind of a fake tripod. Right. But the goal is to stay as smooth as possible with your shot, not jerk around or bob up and down with it. Like this. Exactly. <laughs> we get so much, you know, friends will send us, we were at the railroad, and it's like, wow, I'd love to see 81 here. <laughs> right, and, and instead I want to throw up. Yeah, and it's just unwatchable. Just pick your shot, frame up your shot, and then stay as smooth as humanly possible. Now here's a little something. A lot of times we just take pictures of trains and people are interesting. Right. Uh, sometimes they're more interesting than the trains. Every once in a while, yes. <laughs> so in this case, isn't th what makes this shot are the people in it. Right. And uh, sometimes it might also be scenery. It might be any number of different things. But don't get too over-focused on the trains. This is a great shot, again, because of the human interaction. Exactly. It's not just a train, it's a story. It's really fun to be able to observe people just doing their job working on the railroad. I think it's really fascinating. And I think that includes the rail fans as well. Right, when we're at an event, I like to get a hold of the people and see what they're doing too. That doesn't mean I want them to walk in front of my camera lens. Right. Which happens from time to time. But when you're riding the train and there's people on the train, especially as this footage grows older, uh, the people on there really become an important part of the story. And let's not forget... Uh, 
dogs and cats. Exactly, like this little <laughs> fellow. Dirt the cat here. I mean, you cannot go to the Nevada Northern and not get some footage of Dirt the Cat. Exactly. And he's not a train. No, but he sure owns that shop. <laughs> now, edit your footage. Right. Just because you shot it doesn't mean you need to show it to everybody. And uh, there may be whole shots that you've gotten that you want to just throw away. But even just inside your app, if you look for it, there's usually a way to trim off the head and tail of the shot. And you may even want to use the function where you can duplicate the shot and say, okay, I want to keep this piece of this shot and I want to keep this piece of another shot, uh, which is a duplicate of it, you know. And that's just editing in camera. Right. Normally, we want to use software for editing and even just the most basic, um, uh, basic edit function that, that comes with every single computer. If you have access to any kind of edit software, you want to cut things down. Now, here's the, the entire shot. Uh, I think this is a shot that I got, but I'm kind of walking around. I'm not sure what's going to go on here. And, and I'm just rolling. Right, you don't want to miss something. Something can happen really fast, even if it's the toot of the horn. Yeah, and, and so I'm walking. It's like, okay, maybe what's going to happen is happening over here. Some of this walking footage is pretty interesting. The stuff where I was walking down the stairway wasn't interesting at all. Uh, so I want to be able to go in here and say, here's the good stuff, and let's just throw out the bad stuff. I like to think of editing as like that Jenga game. Mm -hmm. If you can take something out of your Jenga tower without it falling down, take it out. Right. You just want the good stuff, not every single thing you shot. Don't get overly enamored of your footage. Just figure out what was actually interesting, as we say, what wasn't boring, and uh, what was good. What do I want to show? Especially sharing it with others that wasn't there. Exactly. If we, we've all been over to somebody's house to look at their footage their and say, oh, movies. their home <laughs> movies, and, and uh. after four hours of that, you want to die. So here's the same uh, shot, only edited down, taking out the boring stuff and just keeping with the most interesting part. So before I walked down the stairs and they were ringing the bell, I thought that was kind of a fun part of the shot. And then the part where I start wandering about and uh, heading down toward the train, I just took all of that stuff out, and now I'm down here looking at the train, and this is much more interesting. And everything else is on the floor. Well, let's hope it's not on the floor, because <laughs> if you're not careful going down those steps, that's where you'll be. That's an old analog expression, the cutting room floor. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of gets us back to the idea of walking around with the camera. Just keep rolling. Right. If you're going to edit it later, what difference does it make? Exactly. Just keep shooting because you never know. That magic thing just might happen right in front of you. It might just happen. And so even though you, you're not quite sure, just keep rolling. And so in this case, I'm walking up here. I don't know. I'm not going to show anybody this footage. Well, I'm showing it to everybody right now. Right. But my goal wasn't to show this footage. I just didn't want to shut the camera off and then restart it because I knew these guys were about to start doing something and I didn't want to have to start and stop the camera. So I just kept rolling, right? knowing that I can edit later. Right, and there it goes. Now, to reiterate what we were talking about before, that's not to say get distracted and swing the camera around and get a picture of the dog that's, <laughs> the, you know, or whatever. Stick with your subject, stick with what you came to film, but uh, don't necessarily stop the camera just because there's some, there's nothing going on that you know, and you want to walk to a new position. Just just take that footage out later. Right. So here's a really classic uh, example of what I'm I'm talking about here. The locomotive is backing up and backing up and backing up, and it's like I may not want to show all of this, but I'll decide later. Right. And then I realized that these people on the handcart are about to enter the frame. Exactly. Look and at that. maybe they're going to spoil the shot, or maybe that's going to be interesting. I don't know, but I don't need to decide while I'm shooting it. I can decide later on uh, by using editing software, is this something that I want to stay with? Is this maybe a shot I just want to extract and use as a separate shot? I don't know. 
and then as they moved through I realized that the diesel train is coming out of the shops over there and it's like oh well maybe that's a shot so again without stopping the camera I just swung the camera over here and got the diesel train there it is so maybe I want to use that whole shot because the whole thing is sort of interesting if not I can decide later on exactly what I want to use now on that same shot again I mentioned that they just kept backing up and backing up and backing up and it's like well that's interesting and I don't want to cut it off but no matter where I cut it off it feels like it's in the wrong place so there's this old expression in editing if you can't solve it dissolve it right so again in the case of this shot where they're backing up and backing up look how nicely that just the problem goes away if I just blend it into the next shot of the train coming in uh, both shots now don't really need to have a logical beginning or end so like in this case I started videoing as soon as that train was just into sight and then I really didn't know when to cut it off because it was a lot of interesting things to look at so I just kept videoing and there's nothing wrong with that just no. keep going we'll we'll make those decisions after the fact right and in this case they were blowing the whistle uh, for the road crossing but they just kept blowing it and blowing it and blowing right. it and it's like well when do you stop and and so many times what we'll see posted on the internet or something is two minutes before the train gets there and two minutes after the train right just figure out the part that's most interesting and then and then cut it down right not just minutes of empty track yeah because this train just kept leaving and leaving and leaving and leaving and leaving so here's the cut down version of the exact same shot And of course, keeping in mind that when we're editing these things, we tend to be editing uh, them for people who love trains. And so it's perfectly normal to hold on the shot a lot longer. If, uh, if I were cutting this for the TV network, they would pitch a fit if it weren't cut down to three seconds. Right. <laughs> so here's the network version. important too when you're trying to just film people because they're always up to something and you don't want to miss anything so film it all yeah there's no reason not to you don't know what's going to happen right and you can make those decisions later on when when i'm working with this kind of footage i literally will throw 90 95 percent of it away right because you don't know uh there's going to be some really interesting stuff in here and then there's going to be some stuff that's just not all that interesting so it's uh, it's easy to just pick out the interesting stuff, throw everything else away. But you can't use it if you didn't film it. So film everything. Right. Now this is just sort of a technical thing and has more to do with cell phones. You wouldn't necessarily do this if you were using a professional video camera with a optical zoom lens. But cell phones, if you zoom in with a cell phone, uh, zooming in and out is really hard to do and it also really screws up the image stabilizer in the cell phone right so just shoot everything wide angle and then if you want to zoom in you can zoom in in editing right so most of this editing so all of this editing software as far as I know has a function in there where you can add a zoom and it's the exact same function that's built into the camera it's a it's a digital zoom not an optical zoom so why do that while you're shooting and uh, and and make it in such a way that you can't get rid of it or change it later add the effect later on and then you can use whatever amount you want to or not 
So in this case, I'm starting zoomed in on the locomotive, and then as the locomotive gets closer, I'm zooming out. Right. And we always want to do this in camera, and it's so tempting to do, but look how much smoother that works doing it in software. It's so hard to do a smooth zoom using the little finger controls in the camera. And you'll notice, uh, I'll zoom back in here at the end of this shot, and yes, that costs some resolution. The, the picture gets a little bit uh, pixelated, but does, it's the exact same function as the camera. Uh, it does the same thing in the camera. So you might as well just do it in software. It is just so tempting to zoom in on that locomotive. Yeah, there it is, and you just want to go, oh, I could zoom in. But if I do it here in post-production, look how smooth I can make that. Right. So just stay wide while you're shooting it. Yes, you want to zoom in on the locomotive, but just do that later on. Since you're going to be editing the footage, it's just so much easier to do then. The ultimate goal is to have fun. And not get hurt. Right, stay safe. So stay safe, have fun, and then the, the number one rule of engagement here is just get out there and do it. Right. Nobody ever filmed something that they didn't show up for. Exactly. <laughs> so go ride the train. Yes. And, and while you're at it, also go to the channel and watch some more videos. And if you're not already a subscriber, please become a subscriber by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Right there. There it is. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this video on making video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring because we edited it. Right, we edited everything. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll see you on Tuesday.